Dico ego opera mea regi. I speak of my works to the King. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. These are the words of the introit of today's Mass, the birthday of the Blessed Virgin. Our Lady's nativity is marked by silence. In her infancy, she is silent, yet enjoying God's divine life in her soul. Let us reflect on monastic silence, which is the bread and butter virtue for your life here for the sisters in the monastery. Today's introit says it there, I speak of my works to the king. Notice it doesn't say to the four winds or to any little um, little person at any spur of the moment, but rather to the king. Not only does Our Lady not speak to men today because of her infancy, but she doesn't speak mainly because she is speaking copiously with the Divine King within her soul. Venerable Maria de Jesus de Agreda says that Our Lady in her infancy had infused knowledge. She could have been speaking like Einstein on that day <laughs> if she so chose to. But she was remained silent because she had so much to say to the King, the Divine King in her soul, her God and Lord. Quite a remarkable gift. Now to have the virtue of holy silence, which is essential to monastic life, we must understand what its perfection consists of. What is, what is the perfecting factor of this beautiful virtue of silence. To reach this perfection, there, one, there must be one thing, kind of like a foundational principle, and that is to abstain from speaking detraction falsehood, perjury, immodesty, flippancy, gossip, grumbling, etc., etc. We must abstain from those things. But then there's also a second thing that comes up and perfects this virtue of silence, and that is sometimes restrain oneself from speaking what is permissible, even what is permissible, as the Psalm 38 says, I was silent and refrained even from saying good things. <laughs> the church's father, father's glossa ordinaria states that if, some, if one sometimes refrains from what is even permissible to say, then he will certainly not fall into forbidden things to say. <laughs> so that will be solving that case there. So this virtue, is res the restraining of the tongue, is indeed rare. It was so rare that even St. James the Apostle had to intervene. Uh, James chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. When he says, every, For every nature of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of the rest is tamed and hath been tamed, by the nature of man, but the tongue no man can tame, an unquiet evil full of deadly poison. So why does St. James say this? For often our tongues can wound our sisters, even at times inflict emotional wounds upon them. St. Albert the Great relates that once a hermit by the name of St. Agaton kept a pebble in his mouth for three years so as to teach himself the discipline of, res of restraint in speech. <laughs> now hopefully, sisters, you don't need a pebble you know, to be put in your mouth. But how about, instead of a pebble, how about a great gaze of love upon the crucifix? This will teach us how to restrain our speech and order it perfectly to holiness and to the holy service of our Lord. 
I think Mother Abbots would enjoy that better. Uh, could you imagine her visiting over here? Why does the sister have a pebble in her mouth? <laughs> she should have just looked at the crucifix with love. Um, that would have been a better scenario. The monk learns quickly the best way to have the soul receptive to divine grace is to recollect oneself. Silence has the effect of calming the soul, settling one's heart. For Scripture warns us many things, but here are some few principles that the monk or the monastic nun should take to heart. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. As a city that lieth open is not compassed with walls, so is a man that cannot refrain his own spirit in speaking. In Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter 14, verse 1, or your modern Bibles, uh, the book of Sirach. Blessed is the man that hath not slipped by a word out of his mouth. And even our Lord Jesus had so much interest in this monastic virtue of silence that he even said this in the Gospel. I forgot to put down the quote, but I think it's Matthew 16, somewhere around there. He says the following, But I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall render an account for it on the day of judgment. Lord, have mercy on me. I don't know about you sisters, but <laughs> I need lots of mercy. Especially if you have the gift of gab. Our Lord is very serious about these things. Every idle word. And that's why the monastic monks and friars and, and sisters have been chasing after that beautiful virtue of silence so as to have that greater reward in the day of judgment. Speak less in this world and be blessed forever in heaven. So let us learn this virtue of silence from Our Lady's birthday today. A day full of silence on her part, but full of many graces. And she carried this even into her own adulthood. She was so silent that she did not even speak of important matters to St. Joseph, of how she was visited by an archangel and asked that she conceive by the power of the Holy Ghost. Joseph had to spend many, many days, says the scriptures, in restlessness and disturbing disturbance of mind. And so our, Lord, our Lady was so silent that she just allowed the angels to tell him at some given moment. And so therefore, as we continue this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us aspire toward our silence. And in those moments that we can speak, when we should speak, may we speak like the Blessed Virgin. Do whatever He tells you. Even our tongue should be aimed toward the things of Her Son, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.